Welcome to this ongoing series of what the heck is. Today we'll talk about what the heck is DevOps versus SRE versus platform engineering. Let's get started. Now I'm sure you've seen this famous infinity loop and everything from planning to deployment to build, test, release, operate, code, and all of this stuff. For example, in planning, the DevOps engineer would be responsible for integrating your Jira with your code system, whether it's Azure repos or whether it's Jenkins or GitLab or whatever. Now let's look at what are the things that works what does not work? WWWN analysis. So what works in this? You've successfully broken the silo between dev and ops. Developers are no longer writing code sitting somewhere in the corner and once they are done, they're tossing stuff over the wall and saying, hey, Mr. Admin, go and deploy this. That's no longer happening because the DevOps person is embedded in the team. The team becomes autonomous. What do I mean by that? The team has the ability to code, to build, to deploy, to test, to release. So it's an autonomous team, has limited dependencies on others, and that decreases time to market. These are the good things with DevOps engineering. What are not so good things with DevOps engineering? What is not working? Each team starts building their own tool chain. And what also happens as a corollary of this is each team needs the expertise of everything under the sun because this team is not responsible for everything, right? From infrastructure as code to how to create the runtime, CI, CD, how to build the application, monitoring, security. And that is what makes it challenging to implement DevOps at scale. And what happened because of that, an SRE role came in. What is SRE? Site Reliability Engineering. What does it mean in simple words? People who are responsible for maintaining the reliability of the site. What does reliability mean? It means availability, meaning your site, your website, your bank, your e-commerce site is available 99.99991 whatever percentage time. And it is performant, meaning when the Christmas season comes and a million customers start logging in, your site doesn't take a dip, your carts are not getting empties, your account balances are still being shown, your deposits are still being created. Monitoring, which means if there is something failing, it is proactively caught and addressed even before a customer reports and issues. And if they do report, it is incident response. And this takes a lot of preparation. That's what an SRE is focused on. Anything and everything to do with the reliability of the site. What's the problems with this? What works? There is dedicated focus on reliability. The focus on SRE team is not to ship more features, like that's the focus of the DevOps team. The SRE team is more focused on the reliability. The another win for SRE, it's a C-level recognition of the power of admin. And the C-level people are today recognizing that this is a very, very important role. It's a great upskill path for traditional app admin, system admins to acquire some new skills, some new age skills and elevate themselves to an SRE role. What does not work with this SRE business some organization have just renamed their operations teams to SRE and they've not done a whole lot of upskilling. That's a problem. Or they've created another silo. There is a DevOps team, there is an operation team, and now there is another SR team. Not everybody needs an SRE team. It's a case by case analysis. And one of the fundamentals of SRE is allocating an error budget, focusing on things that build reliability focusing on tools, focus on best practices, and not do firefighting all the time. Do some development, some proactive tasks. But those remain only on paper. There is no focus on actually building reliability. Reliability is only an afterthought as a result of firefighting. That's a problem with SRE. And what happened after that? A platform engineer. What does a platform engineer do? handle the non-functional requirements of a project. Everything from source control to build to provision, deployment, security, all of that. What works? You create a dedicated team which is focused on creating a central platform. 
they say our central platform is GitLab and all continuous integration will happen only on GitLab. What is the result of this? The good thing is your technology sprawl is streamlined, which means now everybody starts focusing on this central deployment system of GitLab, for example. And it also relieves some of the heavy lifting from DevOps engineers because they can focus on building pipelines for their own squads and teams and not be worried about the underlying platform. What does not work in this is the team start losing their autonomy. Because remember I told you, if your team wants Azure DevOps and the central platform is GitLab, now you can't have Azure DevOps because that's not how it works. And some organizations create another silo of a platform engineering. And platform engineering is hard to implement correctly as the old jungle saying goes. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so how the heck does all of this work together? If it really even ever works together? Let me give you some examples. So let's understand the concept of admin versus user. What's an admin? An admin who does admin related task, meaning who does the setup, meaning who does the configuration, and the user is somebody who uses the configuration and the setup. Now in the Kubernetes world, there are even separate certifications. So there is CKA, Certified Kubernetes Administrator, and CKAD, Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. So that's the user side of the, app, the certification. CKA is the admin side of the application. Think Azure DevOps, think GitLabs, think Bamboo, think Jira, whatever is your CI CD system. You, somebody has to provision it, somebody has to secure the network, somebody has to manage the passwords, the secrets, somebody has to load balance things, the workers, the nodes, all of that. That's the admin part. And then somebody else has to create the CI CD pipeline on the configured system. Somebody has to deploy the app, somebody has to do the configuration of their own pipelines. So admin and user. And then that's how admins take the form of platform engineers. We're taking the same example of Kubernetes. They set up the Kubernetes cluster. DevOps engineers become the user of this platform, become the user of this, where they deploy the app on this Kubernetes cluster. The admins or the platform engineers create Terraform modules for creating the infrastructure. Now, the DevOps engineers use these Terraform modules into their own pipelines for their own product, for their own configuration, for their own system or container, whatever it is. The admins create the CI CD templates. They say, if your product is a .NET service, use this. If it is Java, use this. If it is front-end Node.js, use this template. What does a DevOps engineer do? Take that template and add step specific steps for their application, for their service, for their container. So admin, platform engineer, user, DevOps engineer. If you extend this a little bit further, once the platform is ready, once it is configured for a system, for a, a, a pipeline, for an app, then the engineers write the application code and the platform details are abstracted from them. They don't have to worry about what, uh, how much RAM I need, where are my secrets, where are my clusters located, where is my pod running, all of that is abstracted by the platform engineers implemented by the DevOps engineers, the engineers just focus on writing the code and the functionality without worrying about the underlying runtime or the config. Now, so where's the platform in all of this? The great question. <clears throat> if the user or the engineers need a new cluster created, they don't go to directly to Kubernetes and create a cluster on AWS or Azure. What they do is they use self-service, log on to the platform, use its UI or an API, and then that automatically creates the pod on any of these cloud platforms. So the details are abstracted and the platform is a layer up upon all of this. So platform is called 
IDP, an internal development platform, which is self-service by the users and they abstract that uh, configuration details, the implementation details and inherently they work with a Kubernetes, a legacy system, the cloud system and create the workload and the configurations there. Practical implementations of an IDP, let's say an IDP already has Jenkins and Azure DevOps pipelines and a team wants Argo CD, which is not there in this. What they would do is they would go to the, um, the platform engineering team and say, hey guys, we want to use Argo. It looks good and we want to use it because it works well uh, with a distributed system. It will, works well with our microservices. Here is a use case. Here is a proof of concept that we have done. Can you please include this in the IDP? And they include it in the IDP. And then these guys use the IDP and use Argo CD to provision on their clusters. Now another team wants to use Harness, but they are the only one who want to use Harness. Nobody else wants to use Harness. So instead of including Harness in the IDP itself, the, uh, the platform engineering team might just say, hey guys, you're the only one who's using it. Go ahead and you own this tool. We are not adding it in the IDP because it seems you're the only one who's using it. Tomorrow, if three more teams want to use it, we might think of adding it into the IDP. So that's a very, very practical implementation of an IDP or a platform maintained by platform engineers. Now, caveats to building an IDP. Treat IDP like a product, not a project. What does that mean? It means an IDP is developed over time in its own release cycles. So version one might be just Jenkins. Version two might be Jenkins and Azure pipelines. Version three, when a team requires Argo CD, version three is added in. So it evolves over time. What that also means is you add tool sets and features over time. And by a corollary of this, you need a product manager to lay out the vision of the IDP and iteratively build on top of that. Think of it as an internal platform as a service developed by the platform team. Now, I hope that made sense to you and you understand the difference between DevOps, SRE and a platform engineering team. This is just a high level overview to help you understand the concepts. Let me know if you want more details on any of these roles and I'll be happy to do a dedicated video. Let me also know if you have experience working as an SRE or working as a platform engineer and if your experience is fundamentally different to what I've spoken about. I'll be happy to discuss that in the comments below. See you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.